Hi, hello, welcome, how are you? Thank you for coming. My name is Emily and we make things here uh, to be as vague as possible. But basically I just wanna do a super quick intro before this tutorial, um, but I promise it will be quick. Okay, so basically I had no intentions of hopping on this trend because I have an egghead, but my friend asked me to make her a chunky balaclava and I love chunky everything. So of course I said yes. Um, and so this tutorial is super, super easy and I would definitely say it's beginner friendly. However, it's the yarn that I picked that I would say isn't beginner friendly. And so I just wanted to touch on um, the materials and the yarn super quick before jumping into the tutorial. So first of all, um, how cute are these? Okay, all right. The answer is very, very cute. So this is the one that I made first kind of as a test pilot and I've decided to keep it for myself because I have fallen in love with it. Um, and then this is the one that I made for my friend and she picked out the yarn colors herself and it just came out so cute. So this is the one you'll see in the tutorial. I used a yarn called Chunky Grande um, and basically this was the absolute thickest yarn at Michael's. It was $10 after tax a skein and it's only about 32 yards I believe. But what happened is it's actually so chunky that I ended up splitting it in half. And so somebody might say, well, then why not just buy a chunky yarn that's like the thickness of it split in half? And there's just something so like different and special about this yarn. It almost feels like working literally with just fibers before they're spun into the yarn, if that makes sense. Um, which is definitely why I don't recommend it for a beginner. It felt like you wouldn't believe. The second you make a stitch, if you have to rip that stitch out, the chances of you actually ripping the yarn are like astronomical. The, the garment itself is like strong once it's worked up, but before that it is like, it's one of those no going back fabrics. So if you, are like at the stage where you need to undo and redo often, I wouldn't recommend the yarn that I used, but there are so many other like super chunky yarns out there that would work really well for this tutorial anyway. I just wanted to be super transparent about that. I did end up needing two skeins, which split into two balls each. Um, and then I have about half a ball left over from each balaclava. Does that make sense? So it's like you kind of need one and a half skeins, which is annoying. I kind of thought it would be a one skein project, especially because it's so chunky and you're essentially doubling your yarn amount. Um, but it definitely is a two skein. They are so warm. They're not like just for fashion. A lot of the chunky ones that I've seen, I feel like are more fashion than um, utility. I think these are definitely both. Um, and depending on how you make it, like I can pull mine off as a hood as well um, and pop it back on and pull it over my mouth and pull it below my mouth. So they're super versatile. I did end up using a 16 millimeter. I made mine with a 12 and it just doesn't have that flexibility or like looseness that I really wanted. So I made this one with the 16 and it definitely feels more like, like, you know, I don't know, loose and whatnot. So I would definitely recommend using a bigger size hook. However, um, you are going to need a smaller hook for just kind of helping out where you need to. Um, and I don't know if you can hear that, but I am on the clock. So, and you don't want to hear me talk anymore, but thank you so much for watching. If you end up making this, please tag me um, on Instagram. I just started a new Instagram for my, like what I'm making and that is here. So please tag me if you make this. I'm also on TikTok. So if you share it there, also tag me there. I would really appreciate it. If you do like this video, please subscribe. Um, I would love to hang out again. I'm very new to tutorials. This is literally my first one ever. And 
it was very spontaneous. This wasn't supposed to be my first tutorial. I'm working on another tutorial. Nobody cares. Who cares? Anyway, if you like it, please, um, yeah, click that subscribe button and we'll hang out again sometime, someday, next time, every week. I've been posting every week, okay? Good for me. I'm gonna stop talking. Let's get into the tutorial and um, yeah, see you next time. Hey guys, okay, so we are going to hop right into it and start out with a magic circle. So personally, magic circles are like one of those things that you don't get until you get it. I linked a tutorial below that I would say I reference almost every single time I make a magic circle. Um, there are also ways to avoid the magic circle, but I personally find it is the best way to start off a hat of any sort. But basically you make the X or whatnot and then I guys, I swear, there's a reason I didn't take the time to teach you about the magic circle. Just go click the tutorial that I linked below under magic circle. It's literally a minute long. Anyway, after we do that though, we are going to um, just go ahead and put six single crochets into that center loop. So we're gonna go ahead and put our hook through the center, pull up a loop, and just do a single crochet. And we're gonna do that six times. I'm not gonna take the time in this video to demonstrate things like the single crochet or the magic circle, the basics in general, but I did go ahead and link my absolute favorite videos on these things that are just so short and to the point. Um, and those are right at the top in the description box. So I highly recommend those if this is like your first project ever. Um, yeah, this is basically just a pattern tutorial, not a basics tutorial. So after we put in the six stitches, we're gonna take that end of the magic circle and we're just gonna pull on it and close it up nice and tight like that. Okay, so then we want to go into that first stitch of our um, round and we're just going to slip stitch it together and that's going to turn our six stitches into five stitches. After that, we're going to go ahead and get started on our first round. So we're going to chain up one and then we're going to go into each of the five stitches and do an increase. So an increase is when you put two stitches into one. So I'm gonna go ahead in this first stitch and do one single crochet. And then in that same stitch, I'm gonna put a second single crochet. And I'm gonna do this in every single stitch. And then at the end, we should have 10 stitches because we're doing an increase into five stitches. So here I'm putting in my last stitch of my last increase. And then we're gonna take a stitch marker, whether that be the little plastic ones or a bobby pin, and put it in the last stitch. And this is going to make sure that we don't overlap our rounds. Now, normally we would go ahead and put our first stitch of the next round in between the bars like that. But because we wanna do the waistcoat stitch and get that knitted look, we're gonna put our stitch in between the V's of the two stitches. I have also linked my favorite waistcoat stitch tutorial in the description below. Hi, um, it's me from the future. And really, really, really quickly, I just wanted to say, sometimes I'm, I look like I'm really struggling and it's not because this is hard, it's because I'm filming it like this. Um, so basically I'm fighting gravity. Um, yeah, so if you're like, oh my god, this girl's struggling, don't worry, you won't struggle as hard as me. Okay, thank you, bye. So as I was saying, we're gonna go ahead and push through the middle of the V, and these can be a little tough on your first round, but after that, your stitches will be looser and it'll be easier to go through. So on our first round, we wanna go ahead and follow the pattern of one single crochet, 
and then we're gonna follow that with one increase, which again is putting two stitches into one stitch. And you can see here how we're already getting that knitted look by stacking the Vs on top of each other. So now we're gonna go into the next V here, like that. And in this V, we're gonna add two single crochets. The stitch itself is exactly the same as a single crochet. It's just where you place them that makes it a waistcoat stitch and it's gonna give us that knitted look. So we're gonna go ahead and put an increase into that second stitch. And that's the pattern for the whole first round. So in every other stitch, you're gonna put an increase. So it's one single crochet, one increase, one single crochet, one increase. And I'm just gonna show you a few more stitches and then I'm gonna jump right to the end and show you how the end of the row should look. Okay, so your last stitch is gonna go into the stitch that our stitch marker is in. Stitch this stitch. <laughs> um, so we're gonna take out our stitch marker and then the V right after is where we're gonna put our last increase. Every single row should end on an increase and that's a really easy way to know if you stuck to the pattern correctly. And the pattern just ensures that you're making a nice even circle. So your last stitch should be an increase in every single round that you do. And then just like the first round or the foundation round, we're gonna go ahead and put our stitch marker back in to that last stitch. So round two is gonna be very similar, except we're gonna put that increase in the third stitch. So we're gonna put one single crochet, one single crochet, and two single crochets into that third stitch. And that is the whole pattern for round two. So now when you're going around, you're gonna count one single, one single, one increase. And here we are in the third stitch once again. In the third stitch, we're gonna put our increase. So two stitches are gonna go into the third V of this row. And then I'm gonna do two more stitches of just a single crochet. And in the third stitch, I'm gonna put an increase. And I skipped ahead to the end of the row and again, our last stitch should always be landing on an increase. So this is my third stitch of this kind of triplet. That's how I break them up in my head, I don't know. <laughs> and um, I'm going ahead and I'm just gonna put an increase in there and then pop my stitch marker right back in. So at this point, we're gonna start seeing if it fits. Um, and I'm gonna show you what it should look like in a second, but essentially you just want this to cover the very top flat part of your head before it, your head starts kind of curving. And you don't wanna make it bigger than that or the hat is just gonna be way too big. So this is the ideal size. The next step is just to start creating that curved in part of the hat. So, but to do that, all you have to do is place a single crochet in every stitch in the round and just keep doing rows around until it reaches about the middle of your forehead. And you can see here, I'm almost done with my first row. If you kind of look at the edges, you can definitely see it's already curving in and the crochet piece will just do that naturally. Now, if you find it's curving in towards like what you might consider your ugly side, it really makes no difference. You can flip it 
at any point in the piece. And as you keep growing it bigger, you'll notice it's even easier to flip inside out. So mine is curving towards my pretty side. Um, and like I said, it's no problem because I will just flip it out at the end. Okay, so now we're at our next try-on, and this is perfect on me. I think I did four rows around. Um, you want it to hit like right in that middle point of your forehead, and now we're gonna start deciding where we want our face cut out to be. So this part is super easy as well. We're just gonna grab two loops where we think we want the face cut out to be, and keep in mind <laughs> you want it to be about one thickness of chain shorter or further away from your face than you want it to be at the end because we are gonna add one chain that goes all the way around the face cutout at the very, very end. So as you can see here, I'm just putting my stitch markers where I want my face to be cut out, which is about the temples for me. And now we're gonna start making the part that goes to our jaw. Fun. Okay, so this shorter side is where we wanna keep open. So we're gonna go ahead and flip our work and we're gonna be working along this um, chain here. And basically we're just gonna crochet up until the last V right after our stitch marker and that'll get us exactly where we visualized earlier. So we're just gonna go back and forth and back and forth. Um, I'm gonna show you the start of the first row and then I'm gonna show you the start of the second row. So the start of the first row, like I just said, we're just gonna take the stitch marker out and we are going to place our hook in that V. Single crochet. And then we're just gonna chain one and flip our work. Super standard. And now we want to go and that first V right there is where we're going to go ahead and put our first stitch of the second row. I'm going to do this all the way down to the other stitch marker, turn around like I just did here, and then come back to show you how we would finish off our second row because that's a little different. Okay, so here we are back to where I just left you guys and I just want to make sure that this part's cleared up. So that V right there is the second to last stitch and we actually need to create our own V at the bar at the end. So this right here is my second to last stitch of the row. I'm going to do a single crochet. And now we have to go and take this like wonky kind of V, half V that's at the end. And that's where we need to put our last stitch of the row to keep everything a nice even line. So sometimes I take a smaller crochet hook just to kind of weasel my way through on that first bar. Just like with the waistcoat stitch in the very, very beginning, the first round putting this stitch where it's supposed to go is always a little more difficult than the second. So you can use whatever you have laying around to just kind of find the stitch beforehand, train the yarn, and then go ahead and put your bigger hook through. And then at this point, you're just gonna do a single crochet like normal, chain up, any day now, <laughs> and turn your work just like that. And now you can see very clearly the first V of the next row. And if you don't do the bar, you're going to find that you're losing a stitch in every row. So for me, the perfect amount of rows is five, and that brings me right to the start of my chin. So now what we need to do is we need to make the chain that's gonna connect both sides and close the face opening. 
So after you do your last stitch in that row, you're just gonna keep your needle in the loop and from there, chain up however many stitches it takes to cross your face. I think for me, it's like six. Um, like I mentioned in the intro, I have a big uh, head. <laughs> so I think it was six, and then I think after the try on, it might have even been seven because you need enough to close the gap and also one to slip stitch into the other side. Okay, so as you can see here, this is what you want it to look like, but I am a huge believer to constantly try things on. And so here I am putting my chin strap on. Um, it kind of looks like a helmet at this point, guys, don't worry. Um, it won't look like a helmet when we're done, but I just wanna go make sure everything feels comfy, cozy, and if you need to add or get rid of a chain, now would be the perfect time to do so. So now, like I said earlier, we're just gonna slip stitch into the first stitch across from the face hole. <laughs> and now we're just gonna continue on as we were. So we're gonna go put our first single crochet into the V and go all the way around. And you wanna do about two rows. The only thing to watch out for is on the first strap, just make sure you're putting your single crochets through both bars. So when you put it on your hook, you should pick up both bars on the top and do your single crochet. Okay, so here I am looking like a helmet again. <laughs> um, and so this is what it should look like at the moment. What we're gonna do from here is just finish off this row, but you don't wanna finish it in the front because we're about to start the scarf at the bottom and you, wherever you start the scarf is where the seam is gonna be. So I'm gonna pick up where I am and keep crocheting until I reach the middle back of the hat part of the balaclava. So here I am at the middle back, and basically all you have to do is chain up the length you want the scarf. So I wanted this to be long enough that it really could tuck in a coat um, and do the job of a scarf. So for me, the perfect chain for the scarf part is seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain up eight because that's gonna be seven for the length plus one chain for my turning stitch. And as you can see, you're literally just doing this right where you leave off. So far, we haven't cut the yarn yet or tied off anything. Okay, so making the scarf is actually a lot easier than people think. To rib, all you have to do is slip stitch into the back loop of every single stitch of your chain. And this is gonna create a really cool looking, but also very flexible and comfortable, like ribbing material. So you're just gonna put your hook in the back loop of the stitch, pull your yarn through and pull your yarn through. And we're just slip stitching all the way down. Okay, so I just did my last stitch and I always wanna count that I did seven because sometimes the loops swallow each other. Um, I don't know any other way to explain it. So you really wanna count and make sure you're getting all seven or however many you decided to do because otherwise it'll get shorter as you keep going. The next thing we're gonna do is just slip stitch into the next stitch that's on the base of the hat. And that's gonna connect our ribbing and keep it moving forward. I like to pull it nice and tight to make sure it's secure and like it's all one piece and not two pieces, barely hanging on. <laughs> and that slip stitch counts as your turning chain. So don't chain another stitch, just turn your work, skip that little nubbin stitch at the bottom, that's the one you just made, and go right into the back loop of your chain again and 
do slip stitches all the way up. Okay, so this is a great example of what I was talking about before. So my last stitch kind of got swallowed and I find this most often in the very first stitch and the very last stitch, either way you're going. So this is another point where you can take out a smaller hook and kind of help you pull it up and then use your bigger hook to do the stitch but just make sure that you are always counting and you're not missing a stitch. And when you get to this end, like the open end, I call it, you do need to chain one before you turn your work. So you're gonna chain one, turn your work, and then slip stitch all the way down, slip stitch into the base, turn your work, slip stitch all the way up, and slip, 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 slip. And that is literally all you have to do to get a really pretty ribbing. So you're gonna do that all the way around the base of your hat, and then I'll meet you at the seam. Okay, so I'm inside outing the balaclava because you wanna be uh, sewing your seam up on the inside where it won't be visible. And so I like to take a smaller hook than the one I'm working with to make sure that I'm making a super, super, super tight seam that's not going to budge and all we need to do to sew this up is put our hook through the outermost loop of the first stitch on both sides of our ribbing so the outermost loop on your left side and then the outermost loop on your right side and then more slip stitching love that you're just gonna pull the yarn through both loops and then pull it through the loop that was on your hook I pull it super tight and then we're going to go to the second stitch and do the same exact thing the outermost loop to the outermost loop and then slip stitch it together and we're just going to do that all the way until we're at the base of the balaclava okay so once you're at the base you do your last slip stitch you're going to do one chain and then cut the yarn Ooh, scary, cutting the yarn. Um, and then just pull the yarn through like so and pull it super tight. And then just make sure that you're taking that tail and weaving it or sewing it in. Okay, so we're back at the front side. This is the pretty side. I know you can't tell because I still have my tails out. I haven't woven anything. But we're gonna go and we're gonna take that kind of rectangular, um, football-y look we had going on and we're just gonna round it out. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding just a row of single crochet all the way around the face. I like to start it in the corner because that means I'm gonna end it in the corner and I'm not gonna have an obvious um, it just won't be as obvious that I have a knot there as it would be if I put it like center forehead. I also want to note that for these single crochets, I personally choose to forfeit the waistcoat stitch. So on the side here, you don't have a choice anyway because you're not really putting it in a formal stitch. But when you get to the top, you do have the choice and I choose to just go through the two bars as a typical standard single crochet and I don't participate in the waistcoat stitch and that's just my choice I'm sure you could do it either way I think this gives it a more rounded um, look to the face and kind of accentuates you know like that this is the face but I'm sure the waistcoat stitch would do the same thing once you make it all the way around you're just gonna slip stitch into the first stitch of this row that you did pull it through i knot off the same way that we did with the seam we just did which is doing one chain and pulling the loop through and i'm not sure if there's another way to knot off i should probably google that but this is the way that i do it i don't know so i'm gonna pull it super tight i'm gonna cut the yarn and then I'm gonna pull the loop through. And then to finish up, all I'm gonna do is take my smaller hook, it's a size five, 
um, but you can literally use anything. I'm gonna pull all of my yarn to the inside. Here I'm just doing a quick weave first. And then I always, always, always tell people to spend time tucking in all your ends because it's definitely gonna make your projects last a lot longer. And here we are, we did it. Um, I still definitely look a little bit like an astronaut, but they are cute and they're so warm and it was super easy to make. And yeah, I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you next time.